NBA best bets, breaking down the best sportsbook bets for these couple of games tonight. Player props first, Lakers, Sixers, the spread, it's two and a half in favor of the home Sixers. The total in this one is 220. So uh, ultimately, how do you think this game is going to play out? Which way would you go here, Garion? Yeah, this is a bit of an odd one. I, I think public perception right now, because Joel Embiid has been as dominant as he has been, is that the Sixers are incredible right now. And they've won some games recently, but they've been against really, really poor competition. We're talking like Washington, Orlando, not even really the real Pelicans, like the Pelicans G League team that they actually went into the fourth quarter against tied before Embiid just took over that fourth quarter. So I don't know, like... I think I'm sort of inclined to just take the points with the Lakers here, especially if that's kind of the contrarian play. Anthony Davis is back. Obviously, he's not going to play more than like 25-ish minutes, so I don't know how much importance you want to put into that. But the 76ers are really banged up. Like, Seth Curry's not going to play in this game. They've, they've really not been able to utilize much of a bench the past two weeks. I know Danny Green's questionable, so maybe his return impacts – people's thinking a little bit but yeah i think i'm just gonna take the points here i don't love betting the lakers they're actually six and 14 ats their past 20 games against the team above 500 but i think you kind of throw that out the window a little bit now that anthony davis is back in the mix gary let's just stay with you here because my eyes are failing me i'm getting older you know and i combine two questions into one give me your favorite player prop from this same lakers sixers game sure can do. Uh, this one's fun because it's plus money and it's something really just enjoyable to keep an eye on as Lakers games progress. But who doesn't love just praying for Russell Westbrook breaks? <laughs> uh, I'm going to go under 0.53 pointers for Westbrook. It's actually plus 120. This is something that he's hit. He's gone under this number in nine of his last 12 starts. He's finally starting to shoot less three-pointers, which is obviously good for the sake of this prop, but he's also shooting 18.1% from three across his last 12 games. So, yeah, maybe he hoists one up. Maybe it goes in via, like, a miracle. <laughs> but I think at this point I'm just going to keep riding under half a three-pointer for Russell Westbrook. Matt, how about a player prop from you for this game? So I, I am on the same page here. When we get to the spread for this game, I think I'm going to have – a lot of disagreements with what Gary and talked about for props though. I'm going anti Westbrook too. And truthfully, like, I think this is going to be a pretty low scoring game, at least compared to what people expect. And there's probably four or five players that I'd be happy to bet various under props on, but I'm looking at the Westbrook points plus assists line at 23 and a half. I think two things are going on. Danny green is expected to play Matisse Thibel has been playing. So we have that element where the Sixers defense is probably getting better. Um, and then we also have Anthony Davis playing. So I just think there's more shots that are going to be taken up by Davis and then obviously LeBron. And I think that Westbrook's minutes actually drop a bit with Davis playing. Uh, the Lakers may realize at this point that Malik Monk is potentially better than Russell Westbrook. I mean, he's not much of a defender either, but hmm. I think we could see Westbrook playing the high 20s in minutes going forward. And also he's just not going to have the usage that he was having before with Davis in the lineup. So I think Westbrook's stats are all a little bit inflated. 23 and a half points plus assists, I think is the safest one, but you can really justify a lot of different things with Westbrook. All right, Gary, and we heard from you obviously on that uh, original question. So, uh, you know, these guys have been kind enough to reference you and how they feel about your take. Now they actually get to give theirs. Matt, as I mentioned, two and a half, the spread, 220, the over under. Do you have a favorite bet from this game? I just think, the Sixers are the much better team. Um, and I don't really care that Seth Curry is out. So I'm not going to reiterate all of the stuff about the Lakers being average and bad against good teams. Like, I, I totally agree with all of that. Um, but the Sixers roster right now, I really think that Seth Curry and Tyrese Maxey give the team roughly the same things, where both of them are... You need one of those guys to play point guard, really, because the Sixers don't have another point guard. So as long as one is there, I think they're okay. And even if they had Shake Milton and neither of them, I think they'd be okay. But Danny Green's defense is a big deal, and they just got Matisse Thibel back last game against the Pelicans. Um, I don't know what Embiid was doing defensively against Willie Hernan Gomez, but having Thibel there is definitely important, and especially when he's probably tasked with guarding LeBron James. Like, that is not a small thing. So I think the Sixers are basically as good as they would be if they were fully healthy. They're still missing Curry and Milton, but they have Green, they have Thibel, they have Maxi. It's plenty of players that are good they have way more depth than the lakers and i think joel Embiid is the best player on the court i mean i think lebron is a top five player in the league i think Embiid's a top three player in the league 
And overall, the Sixers are just the much better team. So to me, this line should be like six points at least. I think it's a little bit far off. Darian, I feel like we've just been celebrating your opinions for the last five minutes. So let's actually hear from you again. You got the Timberwolves and the Warriors. Best player prop in that game. I'm going to go back to three-pointers made. Um, I, I've taken the over on Clay a couple times since he's come off uh, the injured list, and his minutes are very slowly, but uh, increasing. They are going up. Uh, he played a season-high 25.4 minutes coming off that three-game absence uh, with his knee issue. Probably going to see him around 25 minutes again tonight, and his three-pointers prop is at two and a half. Um, you know, he's only shooting 33% from three, so far this season, but he's started to look better from beyond the arc. And I do think that little break helped. Uh, he's actually hit this prop or the over on this prop in three of his last four starts. His usage rate is still mind boggling. I mean, kudos to Golden State for knowing they have to maximize his minutes and he's gonna get his shots up. So even if it's only 25 minutes, someone with a 33% usage rate, I think he probably takes seven to eight three pointers. And I think generally more often than not, Clay Thompson's gonna hit three of those seven or eight three-point attempts. Matt, your thoughts? Yeah, Nick teamed this up well for me again because I'm looking at the under prop on Anthony Edwards' points. And I, I get what he's saying about uh, having a bad game after a good game, but that's actually not the reason I'm looking here. To me, it's more about Patrick Beverly returning and Edwards potentially playing a few less minutes because this is a game where I think the Wolves are going to need more of their defense-first players uh, to stop Steph Curry and Clay Thompson and Jordan Poole. Um, and then the Warriors maybe stick Gary Payton the second on him, who, you know, Cobb, as we've talked about on other things, is, is you know, one of the best players in the NBA. So I think um, this is going to be a big deal if the Warriors put their defensive attention on Edwards because he is the one who had the, the great game the other night. Um, and then because we're bouncing around a little bit today, I just want to say that if the Lakers play a close game tonight on national TV, people should be keeping a close eye on that because they do play tomorrow and we could have some guys sitting out. So that's, that's probably the main thing I'm looking for today is actually for tomorrow when the Lakers play the Hornets. Last question. You each have about 20 seconds. Best bet you like from this Wolves Warriors game. Warriors six point favorites, 229 and a half is the rising total in this one. Matt, back to you. Yeah, I'll take Minnesota with the points. I think this line is a couple points too high. Maybe they should be about plus four. It's just Steph Curry is clearly not 100% to me, and Draymond Green's still out. I think the team is just a little bit overvalued in general. Gary, take us home. I was looking long and hard at the over for this one, just considering over the last 10 games, the Timberwolves have the best offensive rating and one of the highest paces in the league, but I can't do it against the Warriors, so I'm just with Matt here. Uh, I think you just take the six points. I think Minnesota's been playing just as good as Golden State the past month, so this line's a little weird to me.